I would see, I could, I'm going to talk, say this in a mathematical way. What are the constraints on the side lengths of a triangle? Okay, so let's, let's take some examples. You tell me yes or no if these three sides could form a triangle. Okay, what if we had uh, triangle ABC? And let's say that AB is 10. BC is 7, and AC is 8. What do you think? Could those form a triangle? See if people shaking their head yes. Yeah, it seems like, seems like they could. We could draw it, couldn't we? So this is 10. This is 7. And that is 8. That works, doesn't it? That works. Okay, what if we tried something a little different? What if we tried, like, let's say AB equals 10, BC equals 6, AC equals 3? No. Yeah. What do you think? What's the problem? It's less than 10. It doesn't like. It's not going to work, is it? So if this is 10, and then let's say if we're going to build the triangle, we can swing. We're going to connect each of the other two sides to one endpoint, right? So we'll connect. Let's say this is A, and that's B. And then C is going to be determined by where the two, you know, the, the two uh, hinged sides bump into each other, right? How could we figure that out? Well, if we went up to this other, this first example up here, really, if the side with length 8 is attached to the right end point of the bottom side, the long side, right? As this swings around in a circle, and the side of length 7 swings around in a circle, where are the only possible places where those could connect? And where the circles intersect, there and there, right? If I drew it correctly. You get the idea? But the circles do intersect, and so therefore those hinges can swing together and, and connect, right? Make sense? That's not the case down here, though, is it? Right? If we look down here, now if we try to, to whoops, oh, it's all over here. If we build one that has a length of six, so that's going to be about. Yay long. Right, say that's six. And this one is three. They never connect. Even if you swing them down so they're resting on the base of the triangle, they still don't touch. Agreed? Okay, let's try one more. No, you don't. You're going to tell me how you can tell. Okay. Does that one work? No. Yeah. No. 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 Okay, so the two, the sum of the lengths of the two shortest sides has to exceed the length of the longest side, right? Does that make sense? Okay, that's what we call, that's, you guys just figured it out. That's a fancy, fancy name for that is the triangle inequality, right? Okay, I gave you some pretty hard problems on 5.5 five that relate to the triangle inequality. Now they make a lot more oh. sense. Now they make more sense. Oh, yeah. So you're going to have to, and I, I don't really want to help you too much with this. I want you guys to kind of work your way through these. Uh, the kinds of questions, if I can remember right, the ones that I built, there were some that asked you to, the easy ones were the ones that just said kind of, are these, which of these groups of three side links could form a triangle? Well, then you just apply the triangle inequality, and that's pretty simple. But there were a couple other ones where, I asked
asked you to, for example, give me the range of values of a third side that would work, right? And then made it even a little harder by giving, attaching an algebraic expression to each of the sides, right? Let's do one of the, let's do one like this. We'll do one of these together, and this is all I'm going to do on this stuff. So let's say we know that for triangle ABC, let's say we know that side AB has a length of 8, and side BC has a length of 5. I want to know what are all the possible lengths of side AC. Okay, think of it. Don't say anything yet. Just think about that for a second. You need to get your notebook and jot something down. Go ahead. Does three work? No. Um, yeah. yeah. No, three doesn't work because no. if oh, it's greater than three, it has to be greater than three. Okay. So the suggestion is, and you guys can maybe tweak this a little bit. So the suggestion is AC has to be greater than three and less than 13. Uh, okay, yeah, not eight. It's going to be 13. How come? Now, now talk me through. Somebody try to articulate that in a way that's really going to make sense. Help uh, you add the two to the two sides together and then subtract one. You'll have the the, add, the side to add to be less than, and, and then for the side to add to be greater than, you subtract them. Okay, so another way of let, let, let's try to. I, I know what you're saying. Let's see if we can rephrase it a little bit, Daphne. Okay, so we have to have it so it's bigger than eight. So five plus what equals eight? In this case, it's three. Uh, okay, okay, good. Now, that'd be the case. Uh, we, I'm going to let you keep going in a second. So, this is the case where AC would be what size relative to the other two side lengths? Okay, so that's, and really it makes sense. We're looking at the extreme values for AC, aren't we? One is what, what's the smallest value it could have when it is the smallest part of the triangle, right? Or when it's, a, it's one of the smaller two parts of the triangle, right? The smallest it could be in this case is when AB would be the biggest side, right? Okay, good. And so therefore, we know that these two have to add up to something more than 8, so AC has to be greater than 3. Good, keep going. And then, so if, if it's the longest side, then it has to be less than the other two sides combined. So good. Be yeah, does that make sense? Okay. So that's how we get that range of values. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so there's that. Uh, that should get you through 5-5. Five, five. But there's some challenging questions on there. What I want to show you today, I want to show you a couple things. One of these will be only for you guys and maybe not for the other geometry students. This is kind of a proof thing. I want to show you what it means to do an indirect proof. This is a really effective strategy for, for doing a proof. Now, we've always done proofs. Every proof you guys have done at this point has been a direct proof, meaning you have used those logical laws, syllogism, and what was the other one we talked about? Uh, what's it called? Syllogism and what the heck was it? Let's, real quick, let's just review what these are, too. What's the other one called? Syllogism. What were the two laws we talked about in, in Chapter 2? Syllogism and what number the name is that? Detachment. Yeah. Okay, what does the law of syllogism say? Do you remember? And really, everything we've done has been in some way based on these two. Law of syllogism says, remember this one? Mm -hmm. 
if statement P leads to statement Q and statement Q leads to statement R, then what? P leads to R, right? Okay. Do you remember the law of attachment? So with the law of detachment, remember we had if there's two parts to this, right? If one P leads to Q is true, right? If that's a true conditional statement. And two, P is true, then what has to be the case? Q has to be the outcome. So everything we've done has been has been a deductive process of stringing together these rules in some form or another. We're going to look at something totally different today. Totally different. So today we're looking at another way of doing this. We're going to look at an indirect proof. And once again, I'm just going to kind of talk through, and you'll catch on to this, but I want you to kind of tell me what was it, what's the process of doing an indirect proof based, based on what we're going to do here. So let's look at a quick example. And I'm just going to do the example from, from the book so you can you don't have to even take notes. You can just look back at this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to look at we're going to prove that if two that a triangle can't have two obtuse angles in it. Okay, I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Given some triangle ABC, prove that triangle ABC doesn't have or cannot have more than one of two angles. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to make an assumption. Our assumption is going to be that triangle ABC has two of two angles. Okay? That's weird, isn't it? Because that's a direct contradiction of what we're trying to prove. Okay? That's how you do an indirect proof. Assumption, triangle a, B, C has two obtuse angles. Okay? So, how's this going to work? Suggestions? What do you think? Let's, and let's even try to do this in the form of maybe a two column proof just to organize things. So, we've got our statements. And our reasons, right? I'll give you one hint. Usually we start with given stuff, right? In this case, our only given is just we have a triangle ABC. We want you to write that down. But with an indirect proof, we want to start with the assumption, okay? And the assumption is, you know, it, we'll see what happens. So statement one is going to be this. And let's, let's write it in a way that's more concrete. If triangle ABC has two obtuse angles, let's just say, for example, that angle A and angle B are obtuse. Right? Does that make sense? So we'll, we'll pin it down to two precise angles in our triangle. And the reason for that is our assumption. What other stuff could we bring into play here? So are we like giving an assumption? Or do we like no, you have to make the assumption. But what do you think, even now, we haven't even done the proof yet, but what do you think is going to be, how are you going to construct your assumption? 
What did we do to construct that assumption? We're trying to prove that this cannot happen. Let's assume that it can and see why it can't. Yeah, the assumption is going to be the negation of what we're trying to prove, right? Does that make sense? Sort of the opposite in a way, what we're trying to prove. Okay, so what's some stuff? Now, now the rest of this proof is going to look very much like proofs you've already done. We just want to go through the regular deductive process and see what happens. So how would you probably approach this proof? We're talking about obtuse angles, and what do you think? The sum of all the angles has equal one. Okay, so we know, we know one thing is that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, those are angles, equals 180 degrees. And what's our reason for that? It's not definition of a triangle. What there's a theorem. Do you remember what that is? Remember it? No. See if you can think of it. See if you can think of it. I know, I know you guys use that list, and that's fine. I don't, you don't really need to memorize these things. But what are we taking a trum? We're taking a sum of the angles, right? Has to equal an so this is this is the triangle sum theorem, right? Okay. No, I mean we know we all know. It doesn't really matter if you know the exact name. It's not a big deal. We just know that's true, right? Okay. Uh, what else do we know here? So we can maybe skip a step if we know what, what does this mean right here? I, we won't skip this step. If we're assuming that angles A and B are obtuse, what's that mean? Okay, the measures of angle A and angle B are greater than than 90, right? If they're obtuse. Okay, so the me good definition of obtuse angle. Good measure of angle A is greater than. I'll make that sign for the angles so they don't look like inequalities. Measure of angle A is greater than 90 degrees, and the measure of angle B is greater. Than 90 degrees. By definition of obtuse angle. Okay. Now what? What do you think? Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So we could we could do some yeah simplify or we're gonna do some algebra whatever you wanna call it uh, addition property algebra any of that's fine I think so. We know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B has to be greater than 180 degrees. Okay, and technically, that's just going to be the addition property of equality. But I don't know what arithmetic, algebra, I did same thing. Okay, now what? Okay, yeah, now look at this. If we have, we could combine some stuff, couldn't we? We know up here that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180, right? Does that make sense? So I could solve, in line two, I could solve that for the, measure, for the sums of the measures of A and B, right? What does that give me if I do that? If I go from here down to here? So the measure of angle A plus, whoops, plus the measure of angle B equals what? From line two, what am I really doing there to both sides? To get from there to there. Okay, I'm subtracting measure of angle C from both sides of this equation, right? Equals. 180 degrees minus the measure of angle C. And what's my reason for that? Subtraction. Subtraction, right? Subtraction, property of equality for one to be real in particular. Okay, and now we've got a problem, don't we? Right? How could I combine 
four and five. How can I combine those in a way that's going to expose an issue? Yeah, look what's going to happen here. What, what do you think I could do to both sides of the inequality slash equation? Yeah, I could, I could really just substitute here, couldn't I, right? I know that, well, I know that if the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is 180 minus the measure of angle C, couldn't I substitute that stuff, right? And what's that give me? It gives me something weird. I get 180 degrees minus the measure of angle C is greater than the 180 degrees. That's a C. It's not going to work, is it? Not going to work. If I subtract 180 from both sides, or I could do this. How about if I, it's the easiest way for you guys to see this. What if I add the measure of, add the measure of angle C to both sides? Maybe that's easier to see. If I add the measure of angle C to both sides, and I'm just going to combine all this stuff as just, as just algebra. How about, because it's just, all I'm doing is adding and subtracting stuff to both sides. If I add this to both sides, it cancels there. I get 180 degrees is greater than 180 degrees plus the measure of angle C. Okay, what's well, probably the last thing I should do here? Well, you see anything I might want to do there to make this look even to really point out what the problem is? You got a suggestion? Subtract 180 degrees from both sides? Yeah, what if I do that? So the last step then, look what we get. We get zero on this side. Zero is greater than the measure of angle C. I say nonsense to that. That can't be, can it? Right? <laughs> How can you have a measure of an angle in a triangle that's less than zero? That's, that doesn't work, right? Okay, so how does an indirect proof work? Right, this proof is going to just for this. Yeah, it's exactly it. We're going to assume the negation of what we're trying to prove and just show that that leads to a logical impossibility. And then as soon as, and what's the only conclusion we can draw from that? That this assumption was wrong. Yeah, right? Does that make sense? So that, that's an indirect proof. Okay? All right. Uh, last thing I want to show you. I can do this. Let's see. Yeah, let's try this. I go. We'll see if this will, we'll just mess with this a little bit. If it, so I want to do, I'm going to create two segments that are congruent. Okay, so there's one. And then I think if I do this, can I copy that? Control copy. Yeah, I can. How about that? That's good. Okay, let's create two other congruent segments. Something like that. There we go. And let's, oops. Oh, gosh. Let's 
Let's make this a different color. Okay. All right, and I'm going to do one more connecting those guys. And that's going to be green. Okay, so let's let's measure the lengths of these. Let's go ahead. Mm. I just want to label the points. Okay, and let's measure these. So there's EC. Oh. This is, is this just ridiculous watching me screw this up every time? CD and there you go. Okay, I want you, you're going to make a prediction for me here in just a second. Okay, so now, can everybody see that okay? Those numbers are kind of small. But they're exactly the same right now, right? Okay, I want you to make a prediction for me. If I've got two triangles, and I know that, that I've got a pair of congruent sides in the triangles. So in this case, we know that blue is congruent to blue, and red is congruent to red. And I'm going to change this color so we know that they're not congruent. So this one's going to be chartreuse. Is that what that is? Chartreuse? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, it is? Oh, yeah. So what? That's magenta. That's the word I was looking for. There we go. Okay, so green and magenta are starting off the same, right? But I want you to notice something now. What happens if I, if I tweak? Oh, I guess I tweaked the size of that. So that's supposed to be 6.3. What if I increase this angle? And I decrease this angle, but I keep the blue and the red the same length. What's, what is guaranteed to happen to the lengths of the opposing sides? What's the relationship have to be between green length and magenta length? They have to change. But once again, if, if the red is congruent to red, blue is congruent to blue, and the angle between red and blue is greater in the left case than it is in the right case, what has to be true to the opposite side, the side opposite that angle? Has to be, has to be greater. The green one, ha we can see it's bigger, but it has to be, doesn't it? Right? Think of it like a rubber band and a hinge. If this is the hinge, if 
this is the hinge right here, let's say, and these are like sticks and the green thing is a rubber band. If I, if I pivot the sticks on the hinge, if I make the angle bigger, aren't I stretching the rubber band? Yeah. Okay, right? And if I, if I let the sticks swing back closer together, the rubber band is getting shorter. That's called, that is something in geometry. That's called the hinge theorem. And that's exactly what it says. It says it in a few more words than that. But that's, that's really all it's getting at. And if you just visualize the rubber band and the sticks, you know, you'll, that relationship is pretty easy to, to deal with. Okay, what's an example of something that we're going to do with that? So I want to know, tell me, how much time we got? Oh, well, lots of time. Okay, so what if we got something like this? What if we've got... Can you tell me? Somebody tell me something about those triangles. Oh. Okay, so but I, I need you're right. Segment T V or T U and segment R S are not congruent, but I want to know something more than that. Be more specific. Okay, good. So T U is greater than RS, isn't it? Because the angle that connects the two congruent sides is bigger here. Okay, I'll give you another one. Can you tell me something? And if so, what is it that you're going to tell me? <coughs> can't tell me anything yet, can you? Nope. Right? Okay, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you that this angle is 70 degrees, and this angle is 75 degrees. Oh, no, no, it's not supposed to be off-center. It's supposed to, it's supposed to match up. <laughs> That's just my crappy drawing. It's supposed to go like that. Like that. Yeah. That's even, oh my gosh. That's even worse. Yeah. Let's try that again. Eric, you wrote that. He tried, Kurt. Well, That's all that matters. There you no. go. Kurt's <laughs> <laughs> right. I might try to trick you. Oh, yeah. don't touch the so what do you know? Well, like, what? No, you're crappy at drawing triangles. Mm -hmm. That's true. You're crappy at drawing triangles. <laughs> but what else? Yeah. We still don't know anything. Still don't know anything. Yeah, Why because, come? Because it's not. Ah, okay. Yeah, because they're not corresponding angles, are they? Right? In the in the hinge theorem, the angle has to be the angle that's pinched between the congruent sides, right? And so this angle right here would have to correspond to this angle, right? 
there's no way of us knowing, is there? If we only know one angle and a triangle, these other two could be anything, right? So that one we don't know. Now, what if I made one little change here? And those were parallel. Yeah, what if I said this? Oops. What if I said this? What could you tell me now? Okay, AC would be greater than DC, right? Everybody see that? C? No. Right? Because these are the rubber bands, right? AC and DC are the rubber bands. Okay. All right, I think you got it. Okay, one more. One more thing. Uh, how about this one? Okay, if we go back to... Okay, if we go back to our picture here, something else. Okay, we looked at it in the direction where, where I, I gave you two side lengths and an angle, right? So I did this. Let's just pretend. I'll put some numbers up here. Let's just say this was five. Whoops. This was five. This was five. This was eight. This was eight. And this angle over here was 120 degrees. And this one was eight. 85 degrees. Okay, and then we knew that the green rubber band was stretched more, stretched longer than the magenta rubber band, right? Yeah. Okay, what if I did this? I hadn't got my colors right. Okay, so now what if I told you something a little different? What if I told you that the green side length was uh, was 11, and the magenta side length was Nine. One of those Nine. What what could that what could you glean from that? Ah, oh, what can you tell me about the angles? Uh, okay, angle C, and that's a C right there. Angle C is greater than angle A, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, they're not real. I just kind of made numbers up. But you get the idea. So you know that's the converse of the hinge theorem. The converse says if you know the lengths of one rubber band is longer than the other rubber band, then the opposite angles have to be in the same proportion, right? Or whichever the longer rubber band goes with the bigger angle. Okay? Right? Okay? So if I have time, let me do one more for you. Shared, shared side. Okay. Okay. okay, so we got a congruence there. Any other congruences? They don't look congruent, but they are. Yeah, but remember, 
All that matters, the drawing doesn't matter, just the information on the drawing matters, right? So what can you tell me then? What can you tell me? So, okay, true. But I want you to, what I want you to do here is I want you to solve for x. What? I want you to solve for x. What can you tell me? Is there a relationship there? Ah, okay. So, so okay, so here are the here are the sticks, right? Here are the rubber bands. The rubber bands are going to be orange. Rubber bands are kind of orange, aren't they? So there's there are the rubber bands, right? Which rubber band has to be bigger? The one fifteen. The one opposite the one fifteen, right? Because they have the congruent sides forming the the sticks. So then, what's? Can you tell me a relationship? It doesn't have to be an equation. Can you tell me a relationship? Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. Three x plus one is greater than x plus three. Okay, now we can solve that, right? Yeah. Solving an inequality is the same thing as solving an equation, almost. But same idea. We're gonna isolate x. So what do we do? Okay. And you got that out. How'd you get that? Now, if we divide both sides of an inequality by a positive, that's okay. But what do we have to do if we divide by a negative? Switch it. Kind of flip the inequality. Good. So oh, this is fine. Oh, yeah, that's the thing that I don't like. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's the solution, right? Oh, that's the solution. Right, this part. We know x has to be bigger than 1. Okay. All right. All right. Yesterday. <laughs> okay, not, not yesterday.